Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we are going to continue reading from Himad Bhagavatam, Canto 5, Chapter 14, Text 31. We are hearing Sukadev so Goswami is speaking to Parikshat Maharaj about how the, the soul is a traveler in this in this forest of the material world. He's comparing this material world to the forest and how there are so many distractions or there are so many other uh, entities which which hinder the progress of the soul or how the soul gets entangled further and further in this material world because of our various desires. So I'm going to continue reading. Tatrapi niram niravarodha swarena viharan ati krapana buddhya anyonya mukha nirikshana dinagramya karma neva Vismita Kala Vadihi. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktiya Vedanta, Swamishla Prabhupada. In this way, the descendants of the monkeys, <coughs> I'm sorry, intermingle with each other. And they are generally known as Shudras. Without hesitating, they live and move freely, not knowing the goal of life. They are captivated simply by seeing the faces of one another, which remind them of sense gratification. They are always engaged in material activities known as gramya karma, and they work hard for material benefit. Thus they forget completely that one day their small lifespans will be finished and they will be degraded in the evolutionary cycle. Materialistic people are sometimes called shudras or descendants of monkeys due to their monkey-like intelligence. So does anyone remember yesterday we read in the purport, Shla Prabhupada says how in the different mode or different modes we come to the human life, uh, how being influenced by the different modes. Mm. And if we are talking Hmm? I'm sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Yesterday we read like some uh, lion and something. I, I forgot. It. That's like, right, lion. Oh. That's right. Lion. Yeah. Lion mode. Yeah, lion mode. It was it's like a... fashion. That's right. Yes. 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 And which and was the, the other two? comes And the monkey comes under the mode of. Um, Ignorance. Yeah. Okay. And goodness, and goodness, I forgot. Goodness, very easy. Yeah. The animal that, that Lord Krishna loves the most. Yeah. Cows. Oh, cow. Yes, yes, cow. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So mm. how from the cow come to the human life or from monkey come into human life or lion come into human life? Yeah. So they do not care to know how the evolutionary process is taking place, nor are they eager to know what will happen after they finish their small human lifespan. This is the attitude of Shudras. So in Bhagavatam, what Bhagavatam is saying, if we are very callous about this human life, we are not understanding the value of the human life, then that is Shudra mentality. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission this Krishna consciousness movement is trying to elevate Shudras to the Brahmana platform so that they will know the real goal of life. Unfortunately, being overly attached, attached to sense gratification, materialists are not serious in helping this movement. Instead, some of them try to suppress it. Thus, it is the business of monkeys to disturb the activities of the Brahmanas. Are you all able to hear me okay? Is the voice okay? Yes, the voice is okay. Yes. Ah, thank you. Yes, the voice thank is you. okay. Thank you. 
the descendants of monkeys completely forget that they have to die. And they're very proud of scientific knowledge and the progress of material civilization. The word gramya karmana indicates activities meant only for the improvement of bodily comforts. Presently, all human society is engaged in improving economic conditions and bodily comforts. <laughs> we can see this is what's happening. No? All the propaganda around us, all, all what we see, it's only en entrapping us more and more to, to think that we are the body, you know, completely move away from God. All our, our modern education, our wherever we look, you know, the, the, the propaganda that's going around. People are not interested in knowing in what is going to happen after death, nor do they believe in the transmigration of the soul. When one scientifically studies the evolutionary theory, one can understand that human life is a junction where one may take the path of promotion or degradation. So in this human life, we are creating our destiny. Junction where one may take, be promoted or degraded. So we can be promoted maybe to the heavenly planets if we act piously or promoted to the spiritual kingdom if we engage in spiritual activities. But we can also be degraded to animal life or to hellish conditions if we act so. If we can act so, you know. <clears throat> so this human body is where we are we are creating karma. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 925, Yanti Deva Vratan Devan, Pitrin Yanti Pitra Vrata, Bhutani Yanti Bhutija, Yanti Mad Yajino Pimam. Those who worship the demigods will take birth among the demigods. Those who worship ghosts and spirits will take among such beings. And those who worship ancestors go to the ancestors. And those who worship me will live with me. So Krishna is saying, whoever we worship, we will go there after death. You know, so depends whoever we worship. Worship demigods, we can go and live with the demigods in their planets. We worship ghosts and spirits, then we will also take birth among them. Worship the ancestors, then we will also go to Pitralok. <clears throat> but if we want to go to the spiritual world, then we have to worship Lord Krishna. In this life, we have to prepare ourselves for promotion to the next life. Those who are in the mode of Rajagun are generally interested in being promoted to the heavenly planets. Some unknowingly are degraded to lower animal forms. Those in the mode of goodness can engage in devotional service. And after that, they can return home back to Godhead. That is the real purpose of human life. This Krishna consciousness movement is trying to bring intelligent human beings to the platform of devotional service. Bhagavatam says that those who are intelligent in this age of Kali, will worship Lord Chaitanya by the Sankirtana movement, will worship Lord Krishna by the Sankirtana movement. So it's a sign of great intelligence. Instead of wasting time trying to attain a better position in material life, one should simply endeavor to return home back to Godhead. So one may think that, oh, you know, that the devotees, they are... They are very, you know, they don't have anything. They are very simple. They don't have, but actually they are really very intelligent because they're making the best use of their time. Then all problems will be solved. As stated in Srimad Bhagavatam 1.2.17 Shanvatam Swakatha Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtanaha Hridi Antastohi Abhadrani Vidunoti Surit Sata Shri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, who is the Paramatma, super soul in everyone's heart, and the benefactor of the truthful devotee, cleanses the desire for material enjoyment from the heart of the devotee who relishes his messages, which are in themselves virtuous when properly heard and chanted. 
So who is the Paramatma in the heart? Shri Krishna. Krishna. Shri Krishna. 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 That's right. So is he in the heart of only some species or some living entities? No. no. Everyone's. Yeah. He's in everyone's heart. All living entity. Then... How does he, when when is he cleaning this desire for material enjoyment? From whose heart is he cleaning it? For those who surrender. Everyone's heart. Yes, surrender to him. Those, those who, who surrender chant. to him. That's those right. Surrender. Those who chant, those who surrender. Yeah. Those who desire to go back to him. Is it? Do, those who desire to go back to him. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I'm so he fulfills our desires. Yeah, that's right. Like today earlier, we were reading in Bhagavad Gita based on our desire. You know, uh, that there's some some mantra in the Shrateshvatara Upanishad that based on our desire, some are going to hell, some are going to heaven. So Krishna is making arrangement accordingly. So his messages are virtuous when properly heard and chanted. This is not ordinary. Hearing about the glories of the Lord, hearing from Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita. This is transcendental matter. One simply has to follow the regulative principles, act like a Brahmana, chant the Hare Krishna mantra and read Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. In this way, one purifies himself of the baser, material modes, tamogon and rajogon, and becoming free from the greed of these modes can com attain complete peace of mind. So what is Shla Prabhupada saying? How one purifies for himself from rajogon and tamogon? By Harinam Sankirtan, by reading Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and by chanting Yes, that's right. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And following the regulative principles. So Prabhupada is saying, just simply follow the regulative principles. Chant Hare Krishna, read Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavata. This way, purify oneself. Give up this modes of passion and ignorance. And then what will happen? What will the result be? You will understand your relationship with Krishna. Yeah. And attain complete it's peace of mind. Peace of mind. First will come peace of mind. And then one can understand one's relationship with Krishna. <laughs> and get the highest perfection. Siddhim Paramam Kataha. Highest perfection. So we simply have to follow this program. Follow the regulative principles. Chant Hare Krishna, hear or read from Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. And Prabhupada is saying, one can revive one's relationship with Krishna. Kochet Brumavad Ayahi Karthe Shukraheshu Ramsyan Yatama Anuratha Sutadara Vatsalo Yavaya Shanaha as a monkey jumps from one tree to another, the conditioned soul jumps from one body to another. As the monkey is ultimately captured by the hunter and is unable to get out of captivity, the conditioned soul, being captivated by momentary sex pleasure, becomes attached to different types of bodies and is encaged in family life. Family life affords the conditioned soul a festival of momentary sex pleasure and thus is completely unable to get out of the material clutches. As stated in Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 11, Chapter 9, Text 29, Vishaya Kalu Sarvatasya, bodily necessities, eating, sleeping, mating and defending are all very easily available in any form of life. It is stated here that the Vana, monkey, <clears throat> is very much attracted to sex. Each monkey keeps at least two dozen wives 
and he jumps from one tree to another to capture the female monkeys. Thus, he immediately engages in sexual intercourse. In this way, the monkey's business is to jump from one tree to another and enjoy sex with his wives. The conditioned soul is doing the same thing, transmigrating from one body to another and engaging in sex. He thus completely forgets how to become free from the clutches of material engagement. Sometimes the monkey is captured by a hunter who sells its body to doctors so that its glands can be removed for the benefit of another monkey. All this is going on in the name of economic development <clears throat> and improved sex life. So Sukadev Goswami is saying this is how we, the conditioned soul, stays here in the material world, captivated by sex. And then we are unable to get out of the material world. Evam Advani Avarundhanu Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Sorry, uh, from that last line, that previous summary. So what does it yeah. mean? That means like uh, organ donation is not permitted. It's not advisable. When you say, right? Oh, yes. oh, this this program yeah, is saying it's it's body to doctors so that its glands can be removed for the benefit, for the benefit of, of another monkey because yeah. here even the human being who is going from one body to another is compared to the monkey okay so it's because, nothing to do with like people donating their organs like you know after yeah, that day hmm. here it's not it's not referring to that. Here it's, it's referring that the monkey is going from tree to tree. Similarly, mm -hmm. the soul, we living entities are going from one body to another. So it's like a monkey also. Mm. That's what it said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the organ donation, that's another discussion in itself, you know? Yeah. Because then one gets implicated in the karma and all those things are then again mm -hmm. that comes into yeah because who but you're giving that organ to know. what he's going to do with it huh? yeah that's why I wonder what is it right to do that or no <laughs> like you know to well, make that one okay. cannot say yeah see one can't say right or wrong but we have to understand that we will get that karma, you know. That choice, of course, that we have to make, but who we are giving the do organ to, then what they're going to do with it, how they're going to act, we No, if we it will is get benefiting another it. person, like a yeah. person needs, right? So if it's used for that purpose, then... yeah. Right? To save another person's life. Yeah. Then again, what will come is that person's karma. Also, you will get a share of that. So that's why they say the best thing is to give it to a devotee. Then. Right. You know, if at all. You want, because then the devotee gets a spiritual karma or rather no karma. It's spiritual benefit. So one way can get benefit that spiritually that way. Okay. But again, there are so many, it's going to be very, it's like very personal. So it will have to be seen as per time, place, circumstance. Who is in need? Is it a very dear family member? You know, there's so many mm. things which are going to come into, into play at that moment. Right? That will... Yeah. So it's called have organ donation bank. I'm not sure of that. No, right? Yeah, I'm yeah, not sure. Thing. Like, yeah, okay, what you're saying, like, okay, it comes to pur on purpose for a devotee. It's very good. Yeah. But how do we know? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. true. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. If you want, I could find out, though. But as yeah. of now, I'm not sure. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Evam Advani Avarundhanum Rityu Gacha Bhayat 
Kamasin Kiri Kandara Praye. Does anyone want to repeat? <coughs> I can read for a few minutes. Yeah. I can't see the translation. No. In this material world, when the conditioned soul forgets his relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead and does not care for Krishna consciousness, he simply engages in the engages different types in the of genius and sinful activities. He is then subjected to the threefold miseries and out of fear of the elephant of death, he falls into the darkness found in a mountain cave. Everyone is afraid of death and however strong a materialistic person may be, when there is disease and old age, one must certainly accept death's notice. The conditioned soul becomes very morose to receive notice of death. His fear is compared to the fear experienced upon entering a dark mountain cave and death is compared to a great elephant. So certainly death is fearful. Death is fearful for one who does not know what the next destination is going to be. It's so only a, a pure devotee. He is not afraid of death because he is completely surrendered to Krishna. But the condition soul be we certainly we get we get fearful of death. <clears throat> Translation. The conditioned soul suffers many miserable bodily conditions, such as being affected by severe cold and strong winds, he also suffers due to the activities of other living beings and due to natural disturbances. When he is unable to counteract them and has to remain in a miserable condition, he naturally becomes very morose because he wants to enjoy material facilities. So we were here in Sukadev Goswami is saying that each conditioned soul is afflicted by three types of miseries. And then if we are not able to counteract the miseries, of course, we become morose. You know, like, I don't want to suffer. I want to enjoy. Kwachit mit vyavaharan yat kinchidhanam upiyati with shashtena. Translation. Sometimes conditioned souls exchange money, but in due course of time, enmity arises because of cheating. Although there may be a tiny profit, the conditioned soul ceases to be friends and become enemies. Purport, as stated in Srimad Bhagavatam 5.5.8, the monkey-like conditioned soul first becomes attracted to sex and when intercourse actually takes place, he becomes more attached. He then requires some material comforts, apartment, house, food, friends, wealth, and so on. In order to acquire these things, he has to cheat others. And this creates enmity, even among the most intimate friends. Sometimes this enmity is created between the conditioned soul and the father of spiritual master. And the father or spiritual master. Unless one is firmly fixed in the regulative principles, 
one may perform mischievous acts even if one is a member of Krishna consciousness movement. We therefore advise our disciples to strictly follow the regulative principles. Otherwise, the most important movement for the upliftment of humanity will be hampered due to the decisions among its members, dissensions among its members. Those who are serious about pushing forward this Krishna consciousness movement should remember this and strictly follow the regulative principles so that their minds will not be disturbed. So Tantiv Goswami is saying that because this cheating propensity is there in every human being, we have it in all conditioned souls. The, the propensity, the inclination to cheat and that that's what creates enemies. So one may be good friends for some time, but then after some time, one may become enemy of each other. So Prabhupada is saying that the members of Krishna consciousness movement, at least those who are very serious, should strictly follow the regulative principles so that they can remain pure. Purity is the force, Prabhupada would say. <clears throat> so the Krishna conscious movement can go on for the benefit of of the entire human human race, no, for everyone. Actually, not only human beings, everyone is benefited by hearing the Hari Nam Sankirtan. And the, the birds and the bees and the animals and the trees. So the regulative principles here, they are talking about the four regulative principles, right? Yes, that's right. And they are, can we just yeah. revise them again? That they are chanting 16 rounds? The four regulative Cleanliness. principles. The Cleanliness. four regulative principles mm. is, I'm no sorry? No meat eating. No intoxication. No intoxication. No gambling. No gambling. Mm. And... No illicit sex. That's right. Yeah. Yes. These right? are the four regulative principles. These are the four regulative principles. Yes. Okay. Okay. Kwachit Sheen Dhana Shaya Asan Asan Adi Upabhog Vihin Yavat Aprapti Labdha. Manoratha Ubgata Dena Avasit Mati Tata Tata Abuman Adini Janat Abhilabhate. Can someone read, please? Thank you. Uh, Shilpa, I think you only read. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Actually, her um, throat is not well. That's why she asked us to read. I can, but I, today I can read. No, it, so. she asked us for the repetition of the thing. The, repeat the yeah. verses. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Yeah, that's okay. That's all right. That's okay. Sometimes, having no money, the conditioned soul does not get sufficient accommodations. Sometimes, he doesn't even have a place to sit. Nor does he have the other necessities. In other words, he falls into scarcity. And at that time, when he's unable to secure the necessities by fair means, he decides to seize the property of others unfairly. When he cannot get the things he wants, he simply receives insults from others and thus becomes very morose. So it's said also, Bhagavatam says, no, that money is very important in Kalyuk. Especially for grahas. It is said that necessity knows no law. When the conditioned soul needs money to acquire life's bare necessities, he adopts any means. He begs, borrows or steals. Instead of receiving these things, he is insulted and chastised. Unless one is very well organized, one cannot accumulate riches by unfair means. Even if one acquires riches by unfair means, he cannot avoid punishment and insult from the government or the general populace. <clears throat> there are many instances of important people's embezzling money, getting caught and being put in prison. One may be able to avoid the punishment of prison, but one cannot avoid the punishment of the Supreme Personality of Godhead 
who works through the agency of material nature. So Prabhupada is saying that one may be able to get, one may be able to avoid the laws of the government, but cannot avoid laws of material nature because those laws are made by God himself. This is described in Bhagavad Gita 7.14 Daivihi Esha Gunamai Mama Maya Dorakyaya Nature is very cruel. She does not excuse anyone. When people do not care for nature, they commit all kinds of sinful activities and consequently they have to suffer. So our suffering, why do we suffer? Because we suffer because we get sinful reactions. We get sinful reactions because we perform sinful activities. And why do we perform sinful activities? It's because of our ignorance that we forget we are not the body, we are the soul. So actually the ultimate cause of suffering is our ignorance and our forgetfulness of Krishna. So that leads to our suffering. Forgetfulness of Krishna. Evam vritta vyati sangha vipritta veranu bandho pipurva Evam vritta vyati sangha vipritta veranu bandho pipurva Vasana yamitta Udvahati Atapavahati Masanaya Mata Udvahati Atapavahati Although people may be enemies, in order to fulfill their desires again and again, they sometimes get married. Unfortunately, these marriages do not last very long and the people involved are separated again by divorce or other means. As stated previously, every conditioned soul has the propensity to cheat, even in marriage. Everywhere in this material world, one conditioned soul is envious of another. For the time being, people may remain friends, but eventually they become enemies again and fight over money. Sometimes they marry and then separate by divorce or other means. On the whole, unity is never permanent. Due to the cheating propensity, both parties always remain envious. Even in Krishna consciousness, separation and enmity take place due to the prominence of material propensities. So here, Sukhade Goswami is saying that, you know, the cheating propensity is so strong that even a husband and wife, after they separate, divorce, then they may be fighting for money, or Prabhupada is saying that even among devotees, even among devotees, there is so much separation. Divorce happens. Then one may become enemy also. All that is because of this Ignorance. cheating propensity. Ignorance, hmm? Ignorance and yeah, cheating propensity. Yeah, ignorance, yes. Yeah, the, the root cause is the ignorance, yes. So here Prabhupada is saying that even devotees are afflicted by, but not the pure devotee. Eh? So the practicing devotees, they get affected by this. But the pure devotee, not him. But yes, practicing devotee, yeah. <clears throat> it does mean samsara, tvani nana, kleshopa sarga, padita apana. जातम जातम Upadaya Shochan Muryan Vibayat Vivadan Krandan Samasrishyan Upadaya Shochan Muryan Vibayat Vivadan Krandan Samasrishyan Gaya Nayamana Sadhu Varjito 
नैवावर्तते व्यापीयत वर्तते उपदिशन्ति A path of this material world is full of material miseries, and various troubles disturb the conditioned souls. Sometimes he loses, and sometimes he gains. In either case, the path is full of danger. Sometimes the conditioned soul is separated from his father by death or other circumstances, leaving him aside. He gradually becomes attached to others, such as his children. In this way, the conditioned soul is sometimes illusioned and afraid. Sometimes he cries loudly out of fear. Sometimes he is happy, maintaining his family, and sometimes he is overjoyed and sings melodiously. In this way, he becomes entangled and forgets his separation from the supreme personality of Godhead since time immemorial. Thus, he traverses the dangerous path of material existence. and on this path he is not at all happy those who are self realized simply take shelter of the supreme personality of godhead in order to get out of this dangerous material existence without accepting the devotional path one cannot get out of the clutches of material existence the conclusion is that no one can be happy in material life one must take to krishna consciousness by thoroughly analyzing the materialistic way of life any sane man can understand that there is not the least happiness in this world so one may say oh why are you giving such a depressive outlook you know why you're saying so negative how can you look so negative at thing look at the brighter side <laughs> but sukadev goswami is trying to tell us to look at the truth he's saying look at things as they are without trying to quote them into anything analyze what is it and then prabhupada is saying that if we actually analyze our materialistic life we are very attached to being here that's the, that's why we are here you know but if one actually analyzes it then one will understand that there is not there's no happiness in this world however due to continuing on the path of danger from time immemorial and not associating with saintly persons the conditioned soul under illusion wants to enjoy this material world so our conditioning it's not is of one day or two days you know it's not that this body is the first body that we have got in since time immemorial we are in this material world our conditioning is really strong really deep so our illusion is so strong that we are just want to enjoy we want to find uh, happiness in this material world of course the soul always wants to enjoy ananda maya vyasa that's the nature of the soul but what is our folly right now is we are trying to find this enjoyment in the material world without understanding that our true joy is actually in the spiritual world material energy sometimes gives him a chance at so called happiness but the conditioned soul is perpetually being punished by material nature so of course we do get some happiness here that's why it that's the reason we are still able to be staying here in the material world if there was no no happiness we we wouldn't be here so we do feel happy but it's sometimes very short you know and we have to work very hard for it it is therefore said dandya jane raja yena nadide chubaya cc madhya 20.118 materialistic life means continuous unhappiness but sometimes we accept happiness as it appears between the gaps sometimes a condemned person is submerged in water and hauled out actually all of this is meant for punishment but he feels a little comfort when he's taken out of water 
This is the situation with the conditioned soul. Again, one may say, oh, why? Why are you putting such a depressive outlook? Your Prabhupada is explaining that the happiness here in the material world is you know, like somebody's put forced to go underwater. So one is gasping for breath, struggling. Then one is uh, taken out of the water. So then one can breathe. Oh, I can breathe nicely. So then one thinks that this able to breathe nicely for a few moments, that is happiness. Then again, one is submerged in water. So like that, between the gaps of suffering, when there is some relief, to that relief, we think that is happiness. So the real happiness, the, the unending happiness, that is in our relation with Krishna. All the Shastras therefore advise that one associate with devotees and saintly people. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastra Kaya, Lava Matra Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Kaya. CC Madhya 2254. Even by a little association with devotees, the conditioned soul can get out of this miserable material condition. So association of devotees, that's the reason. It's why I said Sarva Siddhi Hai. One gets complete perfection. Because one can get out of the material world in the association of Sadhu. This Krishna consciousness movement is therefore trying to give everyone a chance to associate with saintly people. Therefore, all the members of this Krishna consciousness society must themselves be perfect Sadhus in order to give a chance to fallen conditioned souls. This is the best humanitarian work. So if we ourselves become Krishna conscious, then we can help others to get out of this material world. We can show them the way out. And that is the best humanitarian work because that's like a permanent solution to the suffering. Then no more suffering, no more birth, death, old age and disease in this material world. Yad idam yoga nu shasanam na vat idam avarundate yan yasta. Yad idam yoga nu shasanam na vat avarundate yan yasta. Danda monaya upa upasha upasham upashma shila uparatat mana samabagachanti. Saintly persons who are friends to all living entities have a peaceful consciousness. They have controlled their senses and minds and they easily attain the path of liberation, the path back to Godhead. Being unfortunate and attached to the miserable material conditions, a materialistic person cannot associate with them. The great Saint Jarbara described both the miserable condition and the means to get out. The only way out of it is association with devotees. And this association is very easy. So Jarbara was telling Maharaj Rauga, associate with the devotees. And Bharat Maharaj's father, Rishabh Dev, he also said, Mahat Sevam Dwar, Mahat Sevam Dwaram, uh, by, by serving the Mahatmas, the doors to liberation open. Mahat Sevam Dwaram Ahur Vimuktes, doors to liberation open by serving the Mahatmas. Jar Bharat is saying, associate with the sadhus. It's the same way. When you associate with sadhus, you serve them. Although unfortunate people also get this opportunity, due to their great misfortune, they cannot take shelter of your devotees and consequently, they continuously suffer. Nonetheless, this Krishna consciousness movement insists that everyone take to this path by adopting the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. 
the preachers of preachers of Krishna consciousness go from door to door to inform people how they can be relieved from the miserable conditions of material life. As stated by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Guru Krishna Prasadipaya Bhakti Natabija. By the mercy of Krishna and Guru, one can get the seed of devotional service. If one is a little intelligent, he can cultivate Krishna consciousness and be free from the miserable conditions of material life. So it is a great mercy. It's a, it's a sign of great fortune to come in association with a devotee because then one can begin one's devotional life, devotional service. <clears throat> Guru Krishna Prasadipaya Bhakti Lata Bija. It's by mercy of Guru and Krishna. Yadapi dik iba jaino yachvino yevai raja shaya kim tu param. there were many great saintly kings who were very expert performing sacrificial rituals and very competent in conquering other kingdoms. Yet, despite their power, they could not attain the loving service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is because those great kings could not even conquer the false consciousness of I am this body and this is my property. Thus, they simply created enmity with rival kings, fought with them and died without having discharged life's real mission. The real mission of life for the conditioned soul is to re-establish the forgotten relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead and engage in devotional service so that he may revive Krishna consciousness after giving up the body. So what is the real mission of life? To revive our lost relationship with the Supreme Lord and yes. engage in devotional service. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. One doesn't have to give up his occupation as a Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra or whatever in any position while discharging his prescribed duty. One can develop Krishna consciousness simply by associating with devotees who are representatives of Krishna and who can teach this science. So Lord Chaitanya, he said, we don't need to give up anything. Just stay where you are. Artificial renunciation is not going to get us anywhere. You know, like Arjun, he wanted to artificially renounce. He told Krishna, no, no, I'm not going to fight. No, I'm going to go become a sadhu, renunciate. I'm going to the forest. Krishna said, no, you do your duty. Don't artificially renounce. Right? Do it for Krishna's pleasure. So Lord Chaitanya, that's what he says. Stay where you are. Just you chant Hare Krishna and hear from Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam. So that is Lord Chaitanya's instruction to us. Just Shla Prabhupada said the same thing. Chant Hare Krishna, hear from Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita and follow the four regulative principles. Lord Chaitanya didn't have to tell that time because that time still, it was still kind of Vedic society. People were still following the regulative principles. So Lord Chaitanya did not have to stress that. <clears throat> it was like a given that people are going to do it. Yeah. So just associate with devotees. Wherever we are, we stay associated with devotees here in Chan, in the association of devotees. Regretfully, the big politicians and leaders in the material world simply create enmity and are not interested in spiritual advancement. Material advancement may be very pleasing to an ordinary man, but ultimately he's defeated 
because he identifies himself with the material body and considers everything related to it to be his property. Aham janasya moham aham mameti, me and mine. You know, this is my body. Everything related to the body is mine. This is ignorance. Actually, nothing belongs to him, not even the body. By one's karma, one gets a particular body. And if he does not utilize his body to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead, all his activities are frustrated. The real purpose of life, as stated in Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 2, Text 13. Atapum virdvija shreshta varna sharma vabhagasha swa nosthitrasya dharmasya samsidir haritoshanam. If it really doesn't matter what activity a man engages in, if he can simply satisfy the Supreme Lord, his life is successful. Samsidir haritoshanam. Pleasing the Supreme Lord. So, you know, that, that should be our endeavor. We may not be able to please the Lord 24 hours a day because of our conditioning. But we can begin at least with one activity in a day. My dear Lord, I'm doing this. One thing for your pleasure. May you be pleased by this activity of mine. We can begin somewhere, you know. Of course, if one is doing 24-7, very good. One is doing more than one activity, very good. But some of us who are not doing it, we can begin in this way. That, okay, my dear Lord, this is for your pleasure. I'm chanting for your pleasure or I'm hearing for your pleasure or offering boga to the Lord, offering arti to the Lord for his pleasure. Did anyone want to add anything? Comment. No. So we'll stop here for today. Thank you so much for listening and enjoying me. Shlapopati, check out